Hello, so we'll be talking about conditional statements uh, and um, operators boolean today and uh, we'll set up as usual a HTML and we're running our coding script tags. So what are conditional statements? Uh, basically these are ways for you to check um, if something is true or false. Uh, why do we need this? There are some times where you want to execute a block of code depending on something, right? To give an example, um, when you when you try to log into a site you've registered for, you are usually prompted for username and password, right? At that point, the check is done because your username and your password have to match. So if the username and password do not match, then you are not granted access or if they match are granted access right so there are cases like that and it's quite often really when you would need to do something based on something else based on if a condition you tested for was true or false and we test using if statements right um, Yeah, so we test using um, if statements, and this is the syntax basically. We use the if keyword, and within parentheses, we have um, whatever we're trying to test, our condition, and within curly brackets, we have the block of code that we want to execute. So if we actually check this, since 3 is not less than 3, um, this doesn't show because whatever is in the block of code only executes or is, is only shown or executed if this condition is true right if I change this to 1 since 1 is less than 3 then this shows so that's for um, if but this is this is only uh, when you are trying to check or you are only planning or you only intend to do something when a condition is true there are sometimes where you also want to do something when a condition is false for example using the password example uh, I gave earlier. Uh, normally, if your username and password are true, are correct, then you're granted access and you're redirected to your dashboard or um, whatever. But if they are not correct, you are um, given an error message saying username or password is incorrect, right? So that's an example of a case where you do something if it's true and you also do something when it's not true. And to do that, to reproduce that we we'll have an else statement so one thing to know about else statements is that else does not carry a condition because whatever condition you're testing in the if the else is basically attached to the if this is a block there it's a package think of it as like a package right it's two sides of a coin so it's either going to be this side of the coin or that side of the coin and since we already test um, for something in the if statement right that test that whatever we're testing for is either going to be true or false if it's true then that's all well and good it executes whatever is here but if it's false automatically if like if um, what we tested for is not true then that means it's false automatically and so it just transfers to the else block so we could have our else block say not smaller which is what we show here so one thing to notice is that your if and your else cannot both execute why because they represent two sides of two sides of a coin and uh, the two sides are true and false it's not possible for you to have something that is both true and false it's either going to be true or false so if it's true it does what is in the if block if it's false it does what's in the else block so these are distinct because um boolean is distinct true false on off zero one two things but um, it's also possible for you to check for numerous things so uh, if you want to check for something in between your if and else in between your true and false you can use else if this is also a package and um, it also carries its own condition so this is like saying okay I tested for this condition and this con condition is not true now I want to test for another condition and if this condition is true then do something
and this shows this okay. so one thing to notice is that it doesn't you can actually have numerous else if um, statements you can have like about as much as you want really uh, you can have as much as you want but one thing to note is that all of this as is still one package and within this package only one thing can be executed so yes it's no longer just true false in this case 4 is get greater than 3 and 5 is actually greater than 4 but what the code does is that it's going to execute the first true statement and when it reaches the first true statement it's going to come out of this um, if block or this if package right like it's going to come out by if block I mean the entire um, package so um, if you check this since the first true statement is for greater than 3 it shows do something and even though this is true it never gets to this block right because it's found a true statement it automatically skips but if I change this to something false then it would actually show me do something else because then this was false this was false but this is true so basically it starts from the top the if statement checks if that's true and then it keeps if that's not if that's true it executes it and it doesn't check any other thing but if that's not true it moves to the next if the next um, statement in the package is an else if then it will check if the else if condition is true if the else condition is true then it just executes what's in that block and also leaves the package if it's not true it moves to the next else if if it exists or to the else so it keeps going that way as you mean i change this to um this is cost two is not greater than four then now what i see is not smaller so since all of these were false it executes this right so um yeah that's for if else if and else so um we'll talk about operators we have um mathematical operators which are less than we've already seen that in action and basically your operators always return true or false all the operators will uh, check here they always return true or false so three less than three um is not true obviously because three is the same so but if you say three less than or equals to three this is um going to give us true because even though three is not less than three it's actually equal to three so we have less than we have less than equal to we have greater than and greater than equal to and um, we have not equal to to check if two things are not equal this will be false because 3 is equal to 3 and we have double equals to to check if two things are true which is true um, you can't use a single equal here because um, we've talked about arrays sorry um, variables before and variables use the single so the single equal to in javascript denotes assignments which is basically saying take whatever i have here and place it in here and um, you can't do that for if you're testing numbers because a number is well you can't use a number as a variable it's a literal so if you try to do this you will get an error it says invalid left hand side assignment because it assumes you're trying to make an assignment and it doesn't work so this is something to take note of it's uh, a problem um, some people um, spend some time getting used to because when you want to check equal to based on how you think you would feel that okay if i want to check if two things are equal i just say is this equal to this but no since equal since a single equal to sign has um, means or denotes assignment in javascript you have to use double equal to check if two things are equal All right so funny thing about using um double equal to this is a string called three this is a string three and this is a number three if we actually check this ideally we would expect that the string three and the number three should be the same but javascript says true and that's because whenever you use um, two equals to javascript coerces coerces is think of it as it forcefully changes the type so this is a string right and this is a number even though they happen to be the same when javascript sees this it sees string and number it changes um the types to match it changes them to both strings and then it compares them so this is kind of like saying three equals to three in like in the inner workings this is what happens and this is true 
so even though you put this it changes it it coerces it so if you want to do um if you want to strictly check because um you want to check both type and the data the value because three and three are actually equal the only reason why we would say these are not equal here is because one is of one is a number and one is a string right but like i said javascript coerces so if you want to check if two things are exactly the same strictly equal you use three equals two so three equals two won't coerce it doesn't coerce it leaves it as is and checks so obviously this is going to give us false and the not equals to has the same um thing you have to use three sorry not equal to the double equal to sign to forcefully check this is true because the string three is not equal to the number three but if you just did this it will show you false because it's saying that both of them are true hope you got that so um uh right then we have what we call logical operators um and not or so and in javascript is denoted by two and signs and um i'll just say true and false let's just start from here oh um, i should probably still use a number so this is one greater than three and two less than three what do you think it shows well this will show false why because the ant um, logical operator has um, it checks if two things are true so in layman uh let's just say in simple english um basically for an and statement to be true everything involved has to be true think of it uh, just like considering the um english meaning of and and means two this and this like they come together right so it's like saying um if it's not raining and i'm not tired I can go out right there are two things involved and for me to go out that means it must not be raining and I must not be tired if it's raining then I can't go out and if I'm tired I can't go out even this like if it's raining and I'm not tired I can't go out if it's not raining and I'm tired I, I still can't go out because it's and so um, just um, um, an easy way to understand or to know what and does is to remember that for and to return true, everything needs to be true. So to make it easier, if we say true, true and false, true and false is false, um, but true and true is true with and, right? So false and true is the same thing. As long as there is a single false, then everything uh, becomes false because both need to be true then we have the logical or which um, yeah so logical or uh, which is denoted by this and um how all works is it just needs one thing to be true or is either or like it's okay if this is here fine it. or this as long as one of them is true it's work so for and if there's a single false then the return value is going to be false for or if there's a single true then the return value is going to be true to keep that in mind i think it'll be um, easy for you to recall how they work so false or true will give you true since this is all but false or false will give you false right um, then we have not which is a single um, exclamation mark and it's basically negation so not true is false and not false is true so these are the three logical operators um, so yeah basically we've We've covered mathematical operators, logical operators, each statement, and these three are very powerful blocks, um, building blocks for your code, uh, because you can use them to do well basically anything. Um, 
so yes if assuming we're going to check um, a password username let's just um, write a simple program uh, that checks let's that checks for a username and password right so let the username equals Jeff and let password equal let's use a weak password uh, one two three four right or let's say here quit right so that's the username and password so uh, we can say if username if um, name is equals to oh no let's call this um, entered name is equals to username and entered pass is equals to password then we can see oh sorry this is supposed to be yeah then we can see control log access granted else console log your a broad right pretty straightforward so um i would have used the function here but let's not make this too complicated i'll use i'll still use variables so let's call my entered name let's change it to jeff just to see this in action and let's make entered pass well let's start out using the correct password right and let's see what this shows us so just to recap here I have um, I'm just trying to simulate um, a login form without the login user interface or a database so this username and password think of it as like the database um, storage of the actual username and password and think of this entered name and entered oh this is entered name part twice this entered name and entered pass as um, what I just typed in on my browser right just think of it that way and then think of this as the logic that I don't see that checks if um, I put in the correct details so if we put this it shows you are a fraud what does it show you are a fraud because even though the password is actually the same the username I entered is not the same I use the small j so if I change this to a capital J issues access granted right so with this we can basically just simulated how um, you can check different things